Hello, in this presentation I am going to show you how to configure your Exchange Server 2010 to support POP3 and IMAP4 clients. The first step is to enable the services in Exchange 2010 because they are set to manual and not started by default. So there's two ways you can do this. You can do it in Server Manager. So if I launch Server Manager, I can go to the Exchange Services. So there is MS Exchange, IMAP4. I can right click it, left click on Properties, set it to Automatic, and click Apply, and then Start the Service. What this will do is start the service every time the server is rebooted. The other way I can do this is to use the Exchange Management Shell. So I will do that with the Microsoft Exchange POP3 service. So I've got the Exchange Management Shell running already. And for POP3, I need to type in set dash service space ms exchange POP3 dash startup type automatic and then I can do a start dash service dash service MS exchange pop 3 enter and this starts the service so now I can go back to server manager and you'll see that IMAP 4 is started and POP3 is still manual and not started, but if I refresh services, POP3 is also automatic and started. So there's two ways you can manage services. You can do it from Server Manager and the Graphical User Interface, or you can do it from the Exchange Management Shell. The next thing you need to do is to configure your POP3 and IMAP4 servers. Once again, there's two ways you can do this. You can do this from the Exchange Management Shell. So if I type in get dash pop settings, this is going to retrieve the pop3 settings on this particular server. So you will see that the pop3 settings are using TCP 110, and this is unencrypted and it's on the 0.0.0.0 IP address or with SSL bindings which means it is encrypted it's on TCP port 995 on the 0.0.0.0 which essentially means all IP addresses. It is a login type of secure login and we are using the EX01 digital certificate. I could do the same thing for IMAP by typing in get dash IMAP settings and then I get my IMAP settings or I can use the Exchange Management Console GUI which I have running. From here if I expand server configuration and then click on client access you will see I have POP3 and IMAP4 present. If I highlight POP3 and go to actions POP3 properties I now can go to the binding tab which this shows all available IP addresses on port 110 and port 995 and I can also go to the authentication tab and the authentication tab shows we're doing secure logon and the x.509 certificate name is EX01 and this is consistent with what we saw in the exchange management shell. I could do the same thing with IMAP4 and I have a binding tab and an authentication tab here as well. Now the next thing you need to do once you have your POP3 services and IMAP4 services running, the next thing you need to do is to set your mailboxes to either be allowed to connect or not allowed to connect. Exchange 2010 recipients by default are allowed to utilize an IMAP4 or a POP3 server. And to validate this, you could go into recipient configuration in your Exchange Management Console, highlight mailbox, and here you'll see I have three users. If I go to Bobby Rockstar 
and go to the properties of Bobby Rockstar browse to the mailbox features tab you'll see that pop 3 and IMAP 4 are enabled another way I could do this to get a view of all the users on the server that have pop 3 or IMAP 4 access I could go to the exchange management shell and I could type in get dash CAS mailbox and this will give me a list of all the users that will be capable of connecting to these services so there you see we've got our three users again if you don't want Bobby Rockstar to have access to POP3 or IMAP4 services you can turn this off in the exchange management shell by typing in set dash CAS mailbox space dash identity B rockstar dash pop enabled colon dollar sign false and I could do the same thing by changing the pop enabled to IMAP enabled and now I have turned off pop access and IMAP access for B Rockstar which is Bobby Rockstar so if we go back to our exchange management console and we go to Bobby Rockstar properties and browse back to mailbox features you'll see that pop 3 and IMAP 4 are now disabled if you'd like to enable we can click the enable button from within the graphical user interface and get those services enabled again. The last thing you have to do is make an accommodation for your retrieve only protocol users to be able to send mail. If you go to the server configuration hub transport area there are three receive connectors there by default there's two of them client EX01 and default EX01 Client EX01 is there by default for your retrieve only protocol users to be able to send mail. If we go to properties of client EX01 and browse to the network tab, this receive connector will be accepting mail from clients on all IP addresses using TCP port 587 and the authentication methods will be transport layer security or basic authentication if after starting transport layer security and integrated Windows authentication if you would like to modify these settings you're certainly able to at this point in time the other receive connector that is present by default is called default EX01 if we go to the properties of the default EX01 and go to the network tab you will see that default EX01 is operating on TCP port 25 this receive connector is intended more for server to server communications to send and receive email with other servers if you would like to extend this to your clients you'll have to modify some authentication settings or permission group settings so they have permission to relay mail through this receive connector. It is best practice to let your client send email using the client EX01 receive connector because it's a port other than TCP port 25 which is blocked by a lot of establishments including many cyber cafes and hotels that your end users may be traveling to. So what we've done so far is enabled our POP3 and IMAP4 services. We've configured those services we validated which mailboxes had the permissions and or disabled mailboxes to have permissions to send and receive email through our POP3 and IMAP4 interfaces and then we looked at receive connectors which is what the server would use to receive mail from your retrieve only protocol users. This concludes my presentation on how to configure Exchange 2010 to support POP3 and IMAP4 clients. This is BrickHouseLabs.com, and thanks for watching.